Hi guys, it's April, and I have an unhealthy obsession with mummies that I don't know where it came from. So I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I will have the non-spoilery section up front, followed by the spoiled build dump that will happen afterwards, because I have things that go through my head that I don't think everybody wants to hear, but there are some some very special people who decide that they do want to hear. I, of course, will tell you when that transition happens, but otherwise, I'm just gonna talk about The Cries from the Lost Island by Kathleen O'Neill Gear. This is the story of 16-year-old Hal, whose best friend Cleo is murdered. Ever since Hal has been friends with Cleo, Cleo has always claimed to be the reincarnation of Cleopatra. So Hal and one of his other friends, Roberto, end up in Egypt searching more into the mystery surrounding Cleopatra. There was so much history embedded in this book. I was fascinated the whole way through. The little tidbits of Antonius and Cleopatra, their love story, everything that went on around them. Plus you get a lot of the Egyptian mythology as well. You get to see Amut, you get to see Set, and you also get to see the culture around archaeology and specifically in Egypt. I liked following that mystery storyline. It was very intriguing. I do have to say that the characters in this story maybe aren't my favorite. There was a few ticks here and there that I wasn't very excited about, and a lot of them felt like characters I have seen before. There wasn't anything too spectacular about any of them. There were instances in which we were following Hal and how he was grieving and dealing with his parents and just adults in general, where I struggled with how everyone was interacting and then how Hal was very much into Cleo and her thoughts around reincarnation, but when he came up against something that was equally as odd and magical, he instantly wrote it off. This whole story gave me a little bit of the mummy vibes and a little bit of Indiana Jones, but with a very young adult bent to it. So overall, I really enjoyed a lot of aspects of this book. All of the history, all of the mythology, the mystery in all of it. I just struggled with how the characters interacted with everybody. Wasn't a huge fan. And so I found myself reading more into the mystery, Egypt aspect of all of it, and really, really enjoying that end of it. I know there are people who will very much not have issues with some of the characters that I did. And this is the point in which I'm probably going to start saying some things that'll probably end up spoiling the book for you. So if you don't mind that happening, free to stay. My biggest issue as I was reading through this book, as I sort of alluded to in the first part of this review, was the fact that Hal very much embraced Cleo's idea of reincarnation and all of the history surrounding Cleopatra, but when we first meet some of the characters in Egypt and some of the stuff going on in Egypt, he wrote them off as delusional or losing their mind, someone that maybe they're not very that reliable. And so I struggled with the fact that Hal very much embraced one aspect of all of this, but didn't want to touch any of the rest of it. So the fact that he believed that Cleopatra could be reincarnated, that maybe this journey was to help her reach the island of the two flames, wouldn't it make sense that there were other things going on and things like that? And I don't understand why there's a lot of mental things going on in this book that I just, I struggled with. And the fact I couldn't, I couldn't deal with his parents. There was no give there. They were automatically written as parents that would never understand, that would never be in a place that Hal could connect with. And I understand that's what pushed a lot of things forward, but how they handled Hal and Cleo's relationship just felt weird. A little unbelievable given the fact that his mom was, had supposedly helped treat Cleo when she first came over to Colorado. You would think there would be a little bit more understanding of everything that was going on. There wouldn't be this immediate push of cutting of ties. And then the fact that they're all like, oh no, don't talk to her. Don't be with her. Step away from her. Oh yeah, go if she's dead, go off with her uncle into Egypt. 
where anything can happen, especially given how much unrest there is. Yes, there might be a murderer, so maybe we need to protect him from that, but sending him to Egypt probably isn't the correct answer. I mean, I'm glad they did, because otherwise we wouldn't have a story. But that was, that was an interesting pill to have to swallow. I, the believability had to suspend some disbelief there. And then Roberto, Robert. I, I don't know what to do with him. That was, that was another thing. He's got these magical powers that Hal is very much like, go ahead, do your thing, I believe you, da 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 da. And then even Roberto was very skeptical of a lot of things, mystical, magical things that could be happening around all of this and maybe crazy isn't really crazy, but immediately his first response is to make something extremely logical out of it rather than going the mystical realm, which I also found odd. Plus I just, Roberto just, he had his moments where I'm like, yeah, this is a friend. And then we had these like really sleazy moments that I'm like, I don't want to deal with you. I know. Okay. So that was pretty much my experience while reading this book. Loved Egypt. Loved the history. Loved the mythology. Struggled with some of the character interactions that pretty much sums up my thoughts. Tell me down below if you have read this book, what your thoughts are. I would love to hear all of those. And of course, if you want to stay up to date every time I upload, subscribe down below and I heart your beautiful faces.